know I've done a lot of rib videos, but I've never done this rib video, I don't think. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of an experiment. Now, I don't think I'm the first person that's ever done this, but I wanna see how this works. So what I'm gonna be doing is reverse wrapping ribs today. I'm gonna wrap them at the beginning in two layers of foil with just a little bit of moisture in there. We're gonna let that go for probably, I don't know, two hours out on the SNS Grills kettle. Then we'll unwrap them, put them on the grill with some smoke now added, some wood chunks to the charcoal. Maybe let that go for an hour before we sauce them and let them finish up. I'm just really curious to see what the final effect is gonna be on these. What's the tenderness gonna be? What's the taste gonna be? What's the smoke flavor gonna be? Is it gonna have any advantage over the regular way you might do it, which is put them on there first and then wrap them later? It's just a fun little experiment today, so let's get started. Now I've got a rack of St. Louis ribs here and I wanna go ahead and get this readied up. We're gonna trim off some of these excess little flaps of fat and things and we're gonna remove the membrane. So let's get started. I don't wanna to get too deep into this. I just wanna get some of this excess fat off the top here, any of the bigger chunks. I'm not going for any competition trim. I just want the loose flaps gone. Now this end right here, I'm actually gonna square off. Let's get our membrane here. I always say sometimes the membrane comes off really easy, sometimes you pick at it. We'll see what today's gonna be. Paper towel really helps with gripping the membrane. That went pretty well, actually. A bit more of a trim right here. Let's go ahead and get this seasoned up because we're gonna get our rub on before it goes in that wrap. And the rub I'm using today is Big Papa's Hallelujah Jalapeno Bacon Rub. We've got a lot of surface moisture here, so we really don't need a binder. At least I don't think we do. If you wanna add a binder, you can. I always say that, this is personal preference. I just really love this rub. It goes great with anything, but especially pork. All right, that is looking good. Let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. So I have two pieces of foil here. First thing I wanna do is get a little bit of a spray of some liquid down. Now what I'm using is kind of a spritzing liquid. Generally later on, if I'm gonna be spritzing, I'm just using plain water most of the time. I haven't found a great difference between using just water for moisture and adding a lot of things to it like vinegars or sauces or anything. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of extra flavor, but for this experiment with this first part, the ribs being wrapped up in this foil and contained for the moisture, I'm actually gonna use a mixture of four parts water and one part raspberry vinegar. You could pick a flavored vinegar and apple juice, anything you want, but you wanna get some water in there too. That's the base of the moisture. All right, let's go fire up the SNS Grills kettle and get these on. The SNS Grills kettle is up to temp. My target temp today is 275 degrees. If it goes to 250, I'm fine with that. And like I said, inside, we're gonna go for about two hours before we unwrap these. If you think in this experiment they should go for a less amount of time, maybe an hour, hour and a half, or longer, three hours, let me know down in the comments. But let's get these on. Now I've got water in the slow and sear reservoir, even though we don't need it this first part. And there's some foil in the bottom to catch drips once we unwrap. So we'll come back in two hours, we'll unwrap, we'll add some cherry wood chunks in there for some smoke. Let those go, like I said, maybe an hour before we sauce them. We'll really play it by ear. This is an experiment. So I'll see you back here in about two hours. All right, we've been going two hours. Let's go ahead and unwrap these ribs. Well, we definitely have some tenderness here. Look at those bones. So this is interesting. It's 
So I'm gonna lift this here and gently try and lift those ribs back on the grill grate. Let's get some cherry wood on our charcoal. And let's get this closed up and we're gonna let these go for, I'll check them in an hour and see how they're doing. So we've been going a total of three hours now, two hours wrapped and one hour unwrapped. I wanna do a quick tenderness check and I'm also gonna glaze these. So I just wanna do a little probing with my Thermapen one here and see how we're feeling. That's pretty tender. So I am gonna go ahead and sauce these right now and what I'm using is KC style barbecue sauce from Q42. Pour a little on here. Give this a good brushing. I know some people like to keep the bones clean, but I don't really worry about that. You can cover them with foil if you wanna keep sauce off of them. All right, I'm gonna get the lid on and we're gonna check these in about 30 minutes. And I'm really gonna watch my vents and the temp because I wanna keep that around 250. All right, it's been a half an hour with sauce. Let's see how our ribs are looking. Those well, are looking actually really, really good. I like that. Let's do a little tenderness check here. Yeah, those are feeling really good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get these off here. I'm gonna let them rest for about 15 minutes inside. And then we're gonna cut in, have a taste, see how this experiment ended up with that taste factor. So our St. Louis ribs have been resting for about 15 minutes here. And I'm really curious to see if there's any difference between these and say a traditional way that I would make ribs where you do the smoking with them covered in the rub and then you wrap them after two or three hours. I'm not looking for a new way to do ribs. I was just curious. And we definitely got a lot of that cooking done in the foil first with that pullback on the bones. That's a real good indicator that you've done a lot of that initial cooking where you're starting to render the fat. And we still ended up with a really nice color, that smoke, the sauce and everything. We even got this little bone at the end here that's just kind of hanging out. So, so let's go ahead and cut in and see if there's any real difference between these and the other way you might do ribs. Let's see, I got my bone right here. I always do this, let's see, let's just follow it along. So I'll take my mangled rib from the center here. Let's see, that looks nice and juicy when you see that there. That's looking pretty good actually. Now really no discernible smoke ring. I don't expect to see that because we were wrapped at the initial stage. Smoke rings are just the interaction of combustion gases with proteins in the meat. So if you are cooking it initially wrapped, you're almost sort of sealing that outside a little bit and you're not gonna get as much smoke penetration. And really here, I don't see any discernible smoke ring, but the smoke ring again is a nice thing to get if you're going for that, but it doesn't affect flavor really, at least not in my experience. But let's go ahead and have a taste. I mean, I can tell you these feel pretty tender, now I've said plenty of times, I don't like fall off the bone. I like bite off the bone. So if you want these fall off the bone, you might even leave these in the foil maybe two and a half hours to get an extra amount of tenderness. And it might need to go a little bit more after that before you sauce them. But let's see how these are doing. Those taste really good. They're nice and tender. They have good flavor. They're very juicy. And for me, that bite off the bone, you can see right there, it bites away from the bone. These came out just how I would normally want ribs. And there does seem to be, I'll just say this, a little bit of an intensified flavor from that rub. That's that Hallelujah Jalapeno Bacon Rub. And I'm getting some heat here from that jalapeno. Normally when I use that, it's very mellow, but this is actually a heat that I can feel. So I'm wondering if that rub being on there in the foil is really penetrating and getting more of that flavor into the meat, because it sure tastes like it might. All in all, a fun experiment three and a half hours, not much different than what I usually find with St. Louis, 
maybe a little shorter. My St. Louis ribs usually are more in the four hour range, but these turned out exactly the way that I would normally get them in a regular process. Flavor's great, juice is great. Only thing we're missing really is any sort of smoke ring, but I can live without that if you end up with great ribs.